Hey everybody, Chris here from blackboxmycar.com here to tell you about the Blackview DR750S 2CH Wi-Fi app. The direct Wi-Fi connection is an excellent convenience feature on the Blackview DR750S 1CH and 2CH. This is not to be confused with the Blackview over the cloud, which offers additional features that require internet connectivity. The direct Wi-Fi does not require cellular data as it is just a local connection between the phone and the dash cam. You just need the Android and iOS app and a Wi-Fi enabled device to use it. So what's new with the DR750S? First, let's cover what's changed between the old DR650S and the new DR750S. According to Blackview, despite having larger file sizes due to higher bitrate, the DR750S download speeds over Wi-Fi are much faster. For anyone coming from an older Blackview device, it's also important to note that the default password is no longer Blackview. The new password will be device specific and can be found on a sticker underneath the front camera mount along with your SSID and cloud code. This provides improved security compared to having the same password across all Blackview devices. So let's get into the smartphone app. To use the direct Wi-Fi feature, connect your phone to the camera's Wi-Fi network and then choose Blackview Wi-Fi in the app. The main menu is the same as the app on the DR650S. There's a list of video files that you can filter based on recording modes, a live view option on the bottom, and firmware settings on the top right. Alternatively, if you want to download it to your phone's storage, click the three dots next to the video file and choose copy to internal memory. Firmware settings. You can access the camera's firmware settings by clicking the gear icon on the home page of the Wi-Fi app. This lets you customize your dash cam to your preferences. On top of this page, you'll see your firmware version number. Remember that if you change any of the settings in this app, you'll need to hit the save and close button to properly apply your settings. This will also restart the dash cam, so you'll be disconnected once you click it. Basic settings. The basic settings will be the first settings that you go through when you're setting up your dash cam. With the DR750S, you need to set up the time zone. If you're unsure of your time zone, you can look this up online by searching your city and time zone in Google. You can verify that the time was properly set by looking at the live view right afterwards. So make sure you don't have any important video clips on your SD card before changing the settings. Under recording settings, we recommend turning on the lock event files option, which will give you the new event partitioning feature included on the DR750S. We also recommend turning on the overwrite feature for this partition, otherwise it will get stuck when it reaches over 50 files. You can also change the speed display unit to be turned on or off altogether under the recording tab. Lastly, there are the video settings. Generally speaking, we like to leave these at default, which offers the full 1080p HD recording at 60 frames per second. If you find the nighttime video is a little too dark, you can enable the night vision feature. Another new setting is the fact that the front and rear brightness can also be independently set. Sensitivity settings. Under this menu, you can change your G-sensor and motion sensor sensitivity. The motion detection algorithm has been revised for the DR750S to reduce the number of false triggers and we find that the default setting works quite well. If you only want your parking mode to be triggered by the G-sensor, you can turn the motion detection to zero. With the G-sensor, we typically leave the parking mode setting to default, but the normal mode typically needs to be turned down. In our testing, we experienced a lot of false events in driving mode using the default setting. System settings. The system settings name isn't very specific, but there's actually some pretty handy features in here. The first one to look at would be LED settings. As for our personal use, we like to turn everything off except the recording status. That way, the dash cam remains discreet on your windshield, but you can still see that it's recording properly. The proximity sensor setting refers to the touch sensor on the left side of the camera. This can be used to turn voice recording on or off, but we prefer using it for manual recording. With the new event partitioning feature, you can essentially use this as a manual event button. If you find the camera is too talkative, you can also turn off specific voice alerts and turn the volume down. One innovative feature that's enabled by default is a scheduled reboot function. This will turn your dash cam off every night to make sure that it runs smoothly the next day. You can change the time at which it does this reboot or turn off the feature altogether if you don't like it. Cloud Wi-Fi settings. In the cloud settings, you can program your Wi-Fi hotspots and set up what notifications to trigger via cloud. You can also turn off the feature altogether, which will allow you to auto turn off the Wi-Fi. If you don't plan on using the cloud, we recommend doing this as it will extend your parking mode recording time since the power consumption will be much lower. If you want to change your camera's Wi-Fi SSID or password, you can do so under the Wi-Fi menu as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Leave a message down below if you want us to talk about anything or if you were confused about anything in this review and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.